It was close at the end, a little bit of a, uh, a hectic final 30, 45 seconds or so, but the Kings get it done, a 4-3 victory against the Merritt Centennials to close out a six-game homestand with a record of 4-2. and two. Joined here in our post-game show by Kings defenseman Nick Nonis. A double appearance here on the broadcast tonight. Let's go through the start of that game because it mirrored, I guess, the Victoria Grizzlies a little bit last weekend. You knew that they were coming in a little bit frazzled. You knew that they were coming in after a long travel day, 12-plus hours. You knew Merritt had been up since 4 in the morning. I wanted to talk about the start because it had been something that Kings had had not done well, particularly over the last couple of games there. Yeah, um, you know I think uh, you know especially after yesterday, you know we were pretty disappointed with how we uh, how we started and how we you know played for the majority of the game. So um, you know that was a huge part of our game that we knew we had to work on, and uh, you know I think we saw a bit of a result out there. If for nothing, uh, no other reason than just a mental boost. How big was Tristan Mullins' goal? You get it two and a half minutes in. Uh, to, to see a one up on the board there and, and not have to wait and not have to wonder when that's coming. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's always big, getting the first goal. Um, and we talk about that in the room, you know, get a good start and, you know, hopefully the first goal. But, uh, you know, a good start in general, goals will come. But, um, you know, we're, we're real glad that was a good weight off the shoulders. You get a 2 nothing lead through 20. I talked in the pregame show about how good the Kings have been, especially here at home coming into action tonight, outscoring opposition 16-6 uh, in first periods at the Hat Parker Arena. You're full of confidence, I imagine, through 20. That early goal there in the second period on a power play, which also kind of broke a little bit of a slump for the Kings on the man advantage. I wanted to talk about that, just continuing momentum and being able to build on something instead of taking a bit of a seat back. Uh, yeah, that's a huge, you know, huge part of the game that, uh, you know, doesn't get probably enough credit. You know, when, the, uh, when you score a goal in the power play, it's, uh, you know, it's always a great feeling. That's always good to get that, uh, you know, that energy in the building. You know, the fans like it and, you know, the boy, all the boys on the bench like it. So it's, uh, you know, it's good. Any concern when Merritt began to push? I mean, you knew, as we said a little bit earlier, earlier on, you knew they, they were tired. Kings have done these travel days before. You know what it's like, and you know the toll that it takes on your body. When Merritt began to push there in the second, and particularly in the third, which we'll get to in a moment, I guess what was the word on the bench? Was there any concern, or were you guys still fairly confident there? Um, you know, I think uh, it's important to try to stay confident in those situations, but when teams start coming, um, you know, all you really can do is just, you know, try to weather the storm and try to get, uh, you know, get a good push back, mm-hmm. you know, whether it be, you know, um, you know, getting more time, more zone time, or uh, you know, just taking more bodies, doing whatever you have to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, third period, uh, very, very tense, and particularly down there towards the end. Take us through that last kind of 30, 60 seconds of game time, because the puck all inside the King zone, Merritt throwing the kitchen sink at the uh, the Kings there. Yeah, they, uh, you know, they really gave us a good push there. But um, I think our our main goal is just you know protect the front of the net and just. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, let's do whatever you can to keep that puck out of there. That's kind of the uh, kind of the policy. Any surprise to see the emotion between these two teams? We saw a lot of stuff post whistle, even at the final buzzer. There, we saw Johnny Evans, who's usually pretty mellow, yellow kind of guy, uh, getting in it quite uh, quite you know intensely there with Gavin Gould. We saw Nicolasian, who is just that's a Nicolasian style of game for him. Um, I, I guess any surprise? I mean, these two teams see each other twice a year. There's not much other history outside that. Any surprise to see that level of emotion? Uh, yeah, a little bit of a surprise, but at the same time, um, you know, all over this league, you know, guys, some guys know other guys, and, um, you know, we've we played them before, and I think even last time when we were in their barn, there was a bit of a, there's a degree of, you know, aggression between the two of us, and um, I think it's a good thing to see, though. It's a good thing to see, you know, that kind of fire, even when it's not just, you know, the same divisional teams you're playing, but when you're playing teams that are, from the mainland or wherever, where it's you know, you, those games are meaningful too. I think it's good to see. Where are you going home for Christmas break? Uh, back to New Hampshire. Back to New Hampshire. Yep. How big is that on your mind? Ah, uh, it's pretty big. Oh, I'm definitely excited. And last year we didn't have much of a break, so yeah. I think uh, it's a little bit longer this year. So I'm fired up. So you've still got three games to go. That kind of leads me into my my, my next question here. Yep. You've done this Christmas break thing before. Uh, it was, what, four days back home last year. I think you get seven, seven, maybe going into eight, depending on, on your flights and whatnot. But I guess what's the challenge this coming weekend? Obviously, you get three teams currently in a playoff position. Uh, you've beaten Vernon. You've beaten Langley this season. First game against Sam and Arm, but, but that Santa Claus, he's, he's a b- pretty big distraction. Yeah. No, yeah, he is. And, uh, you know, that'll be something we'll have to work on for sure because it's, uh, you know, it's important that you don't leave, you know, these six points behind mm-hmm. here. Brock, let's uh, start where we started there with Nick, and, and let's go to that opening period. We talked with Kent 
uh, in the pregame, drilled in the fact that the Kings needed to be more physical, needed a better start, hadn't scored the first goal in their last two, and surprise, surprise, you drop your last two as well. Let's talk about that opening five, ten minutes, and I guess what was spoken about in the room, and how did that translate out on the ice? Well, obviously needed a good start. I mean, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're, you you got a team coming in after a, a tough travel day, it's uh, it's it's important to jump on them early and, and not let really let them get back in the game, which. Uh, we failed to do, but no, I mean, our start was key, obviously crashing and banging and good efforts tonight by uh, a lot of guys who, who upped their physicality level to uh, to really push us over the edge. And uh, no, it, uh, it was good. I mean, Tristan Mullen finding the back of the net early in the game, mm-hmm. it, it's a huge relief when you can play with the lead for for once. You mentioned you kind of let them back in there. Uh, the, the goal late second, probably not a turning point because the Kings still able to get it done, but certainly a big focal point now that we look back on the game that really I mean it turned a, a three goal lead into a two goal lead and that can often be the most dangerous lead in this game yeah I mean it uh you know I take the fall for that one obviously got a young defenseman there who lost a couple chicklets with uh what they claim was a skate but uh no it's you know his head's kind of not in it we have full possession and then we fail to get an out and and a turnover and we kind of just start watching the puck and leave uh you know one of the most dangerous scores in the league wide open mm-hmm. back door to Barry so um, you know, I'll take the fall for that one. But, uh, I mean, it's it just playing the right way at all times. I thought we were, we were pretty careless with the puck. We've, we've been pretty sloppy of late uh, and not really managing pucks and, and, and being mindful of who's in front of us so or who's behind us. So, uh, you know, we got a lot of tidying up to do in our game. Obviously, it, a, a win's a win, mm-hmm. and we'll take it. But, uh, you know, a lot of great things to build off of, but we got to, some tidying up to do to really hit that stride for the second half. You talked about this through 40 with Zach Evans, uh, but – the, the presence of the physicality in this game, and I thought Gavin Rouser was noticeable tonight. I thought Chris Protopoulos was noticeable tonight. Obviously had the goal, but in that aspect, those two players seem to bring it, in addition to the guys like Tristan Mullen, who seem to do that consistently through the no, season. No, and exactly. When you got guys like Rouser and Protopoulos up in their physicality, I mean, you know, we expect that from Rouser. I know fans will remember him from uh, yeah. you know, a little bit longer hair last year to, uh, you know, playing that, <laughs> that junkyard style of, of a game and getting greasy and physical, but uh, no, when you got a guy like that going and even Protopolis and you know him just being in the right spot at the right time to nice little forehand to backhand to, to mm-hmm. bury a power play goal and I know he's excited that's only his third but I mean that's what happens you're rewarded with things when uh, when you're doing things the right way we talked about this with Nick you get the Christmas break coming up in two weeks time I know you're going home to Toronto I know you've played here before you know what this break can do to players and oftentimes these last games before Christmas and the Kings always find themselves towards the lower mainland into the Christmas break to make it easy to get players home. But teams either charge into the break or they limp into the break. And that can be really the difference in these final three games here. Oh, for sure. And they're not going to be, uh, you know, easy by any stretch. So um, obviously a good week of practice here. We'll regroup, have a day off tomorrow and get back to work on Monday. So, um, yeah, it is a bit of a distraction. Guys will be excited about going home. I think uh, I think when I played it was we lost 8-3 to Surrey. We were down 2 nothing before I even had a shift uh, before the last game before going home. So it uh, – it weighs on your mind, obviously, and you want to have a good uh, a good close to the first half of the season. Obviously, we're a little bit past the halfway point, mm-hmm. point but, uh, you know, Christmas is a big time of year. Guys are excited to get home and, and kind of refresh. I mean, these guys have been going hard since August, since they came back to town, and, uh, you know, everybody will be looking to get home and, and see some loved ones. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, you still got a job to do for, for three games next weekend, and a good, good week of practice will help us uh, gear up for that down in Langley on Friday night.